Howdy, for this video I'm going to go over the combat utility belt and all the features that can go with that in terms of creating conditions. Uh, this module is very dependent on a couple other modules. You're going to need MIDI quality of life as well as dynamic active effects and the dynamic effects SRD. SR are the about time and as well as the lip wrapper. Those are all going to be important for this. So the primary one we're going to be going over is the combat utility belt. It's also mainly going to need the dynamic effects using active effects. The SRD helps with creating some effects. In addition, you're going to need Live Wrapper and you're going to need MIDI Quality of Life. Another good one that goes as well as About Time because some of the features that work with About Time. So once you activate the Cub the uh, Combat Utility Belt, you're going to get this new icon that pops down here. It'll say the Cub Computer. When you click on it and you go it'll create this little cool backman computer when you click on this you gotta go down to enhance conditions and these will all be unchecked you'll have to check these first two and this last one if you use the combat like if you use the token heads up display this one you can check to remove the conditions from the heads up display that will show up here otherwise it'll show up on the little bar up there but I'm not a big fan of it so once you're done save the uh, save the gadget settings and as well it'll have a, uh, a, a way for you to do concentration and it'll uh, enable the concentrator. You can use this one, but there's also one that you can use for uh, MIDI quality of life. Once you do that, it's going to create a new tab down here called the Condition Lab. So when it pulls up initially, it's going to be the default conditions that start with Foundry. So Foundry is a system that you can use to play multiple games. I primarily play 5e, so that's that's what I'm aiming for. So when you come down to this little drop-down box, if you go to System and Custom, it'll upload all of the standard conditions that come with 5e now when you first open it up and you get all these things loaded in you think okay cool great I'm good to go well no unfortunately none of these things are coded everything has to be set up now thankfully I did a lot of the work for you so what you'll do is you will pull it up and you'll see a feature it'll be it'll say details whatever it is what the duration is the effect itself will be blank. I'll show you an example. So charmed, uh, there's there's nothing in it. This is this is what every single every single condition will look like this. So once you uh, set it up, depending on whatever the effect is, uh, in the description I'll have a website of the conditions, what the conditions do. I'll also have a website that shows you how to make the conditions using the MIDI quality of life to give things advantage and disadvantage and apply other various effects. I will also provide a macro for a condition toggle box that you can activate and you can click on characters and toggle the conditions on and off if you don't want to right click on them and you can use it to like remove and add you know multiple of them at the same time. Uh, that was made by a person named Crymic. Uh, he's the person who made that module, or he's the one who made that macro, and it's it's awesome. So I just wanted to give him a shout out for that. Now I'll, I'll link it in the description as well. So the way these work is once you once you set everything up, then you can uh, then you can apply these effects to your characters, and it'll do whatever the effect is. So a person that's grappled, it'll drop all their speed. So they can't run away until they, you know, break the grapple. It also allows you to be able to create other various effects that are not just part of the standard conditions. So a couple ones that I have done that I use often are, say, haste. So if you activate the spell for, like, say, an NPC and they cast haste on themselves and it doesn't apply the effects, if you do this and you set it up right, it will also create the effect. So doubles their their speed. Uh, they get ability uh, advantage on ability saves for decks, and then it adds two to their AC value, and then of course they get one extra just m attack to do during their their action. So this would be, you know, something that's done, and it helps you it already adds the AC to it, already adds the deck save advantage, and then it doubles their movement speed and everything. Same thing with say like uh, mage armor. You'll have the it'll have the uh. AC value, you upgrade it to 13 plus the ability uh, times the dex mod, or plus the dex mod. Uh, another good one that I use is bark skin. So you have a person that has a crappy AC and they just want just a base AC of 16. 
bark skin will override their AC value to 16. All right, so well, let's take a look and see how some of these work. So let's uh, pull up our uh, mage here who has no no resistances of any kind. No the movement is 30. Their AC is 12. Let's uh, apply a couple conditions and kind of see what we're what we're dealing with here. Go to my rules tab. So let's uh, pull up the condition. So when you right click and you'll see all the all the conditions labeled out. So let's start with blind blinded. So when you're blinded, you have disadvantage on attack rolls, and enemies that attack you get advantage. So to test this out, we'll move this guy up here. We're gonna attack with a dagger. Automatically roll disadvantage, and the uh, the other guy will have him attack with a uh, advantage. We'll have him attack real quick and roll his attack, and he automatically rolled with advantage. Got a hit. Done. So simple enough, straightforward. The effect can be toggled on and off. There are a handful of effects that were too difficult to code, and I do have them listed in the description, and I do have some other things to do that I recommend with other conditions to kind of be placed together. Because even when you look at the description of the condition, it'll say they, this person is paralyzed, and it'll even say they are also incapacitated, and even references to go back to look at what incapacitated does. So, But the ones that were too difficult to code because they're too situational is the negative effects that you get for automatically failing an ability check with blinded, charmed, deafened, and what was the other one? Uh, frightened. All of those are kind of situational and there isn't really a way to code like a person to being frightened and having to run away the opposite direction. But then some, some versions of being frightened doesn't require you to run away using like everything you have in the world. Some of it's just like you just have to move in the opposite direction. You can't get close. Whereas other ones say you have to use your dash action. If you can't use your dash action, you have to dodge. And it, that's, it's too hard to do anything like that. So I didn't even... I even tried to do it. I even haven't think it's too hard to code. So there are some other ones that require it to be incapacitated. Those being paralyzed, petrified, unconscious, and I'm trying to remember the fourth one. I uh, think that I there. I know there's a fourth one, and I'm losing my. I'm losing it right now. I apologize. It's in the description. They're all in there. I, I have them all. So with that one. Uh, because incapacitated, basically this means you can't take actions and reactions. It That one's another one of those kind of weird ones to code, but it was also a good one to make it reduce your movement down to zero. So what I did was, is the ones that your movement does get dropped, say like petrified, where you're just standing still and you get resistance to everything and you have no movement because you're stone, that's a good one to toggle with incapacitated unconscious good one to talk with incapacitated you know all those like that are ones that they they fit with and even when you read the description of the of the effects and of the conditions they even say you're arc incapacitated as well so i added all those whenever i toggle them i'll toggle incapacitated so let's see how some of those work real quick so click on the mage again had no has no resistances no nothing so let's make them petrified and incapacitated so we pull them up. They now have resistances just about everything because they're stone and, you know, you're just... And then they also, enemies that attack you get advantage and their movement speed is now zero. And it just applied the two effects from whenever those got activated. So we'll test this out. So we'll have this drow attack with the short sword. So attacked with advantage. Got a hit. So he did. He was going to do eight damage. He only ended up doing four because they have resistance. So that's how that works. Pretty straightforward. We'll uh, test our new little uh, macro out as well. So if you open this up, it'll even show you what the conditions the target has on. Obviously, you can see them there too. But if you want to remove all of them, you just click this button. Boom, they're all gone. Uh, same thing if you wanted to, say, add a condition. So say we'll do paralyzed and incapacitate it. Apply it. Boom, done. Love this macro. It works really good. Uh, Grimek did an excellent job on this. Definitely wanted to give him a shout out on that and you know, made sure to have that linked in the description so that you could be able to find it. But to make the macro, you would click on the box, change this to a script macro, you'll copy and paste from the link that I give you the, the info, and copy and paste it in here, change it to whatever you want to name it, save, done. And then you just click on it whenever you're going to use it. So 
let's test out some of the other ones the ones that I created in addition so we'll look at bark skin first so his AC was initially 12 now it's 16 also when I deactivated the thing it removed all those effects so AC is now 16 we'll go ahead and remove bark skin and let's go ahead and add mage armor so mage armor their dex is a plus two so it was 13 plus two gives you 15 as the effect done so there's also uh, like flying uh, so you add that one gives them a fly speed of now 60 and well it's just their normal walking speed pretty straightforward I had some other ones that I created that were like another one like a uh, haste um, AC is now 14 F movements now doubled and then if they do uh, deck saves Which when you have it when you have your um, it you get advantage on the deck save, but when I don't have my uh, I don't have my saves ability checks auto set or at least for the GM I don't have them auto set to auto roll. But if you have it set up for your players when you do the dexterity check, it'll do it with advantage. But I don't personally do it with mine because I adjust mine bidding on the situation. I don't I don't auto code every single possible thing that I can. Uh, but there's some other things you can do. So, like, I have one that I created for. I have a I have a player that uses the sword of wounding. So whenever they have like the wounded effect, I'll apply it, and then it'll do you know the two necrotic damage. It doesn't actually take the take the uh, um, damage, but I'll at least have the effect so I know. Okay, I need a minus all two, and then that helps me keep up remembering it to to do it you know every turn, uh, and you know. Because whenever you turn it off, it, it does the same effect. So it just kind of helps me remember it so I don't forget it because I kind of forget unless someone reminds me to, to redo an effect. But that's pretty much it. The Combat Utility Belt is a really fun module with being able to create the conditions like this. I, I really enjoy it, especially when I sat down and took the time to actually make all of the conditions. It really kind of enhanced the game. Uh, it, makes, it makes some really cool effects, like especially like you know having like the person get knocked prone and then you really get to see the effect of like getting the advantage on somebody and then someone trying to like attack you from distance gets disadvantaged like for example this guy comes in tries to attack the mage on the ground gets it gets a hit and then we'll just minus off the we won't worry about damage and then he you know shoots from a distance and he gets the hand crossbow out takes the takes the bow out and then automatically rolls disadvantage you know when you get these set up the right way it, it, it's really fun and it makes it really streamlined and it kind of saves you a little bit of work of having to remember okay so I have to remember this guy has disadvantage for this this guy has advantage for that and it just cuts all that out so you don't really have to worry about it um, all of the all of the description has all the all the work done for you if there are any other effects that you want to know how to do just let me know and I'll try to help you out as much as I can I've gotten pretty good at coding things over a while my paladin in my group is literally just nothing but just a walking code because all the stuff that they do on their turn and you know it makes it for you know a pretty fun experience but if you need anything just let me know and then, until then I'll see you in the next one